What's going how, on? How did you go about the uh, process of uh, getting to know Mayfield and, and uh, figuring out uh, how you're going to try to teach and coach him? Yeah, you know what? A lot of that went down last year uh, when I was a running backs coach because you kind of, I mean, just being around an offensive preparation and everything, and obviously, you know, the quarterback's got to have his hands in every room. So Baker would come in, um, and Drew and Freddie obviously kind of eased that too. You know, they, they I think, kind of vouched for me a little bit when I came in. Obviously, midseason, you know, Baker's probably wondering who's this old fat guy that they claim played quarterback at some point. But um, no, and, and it worked out great. I mean, I, I love the way he attacks the process and attacks the game and, and really just enjoys the preparation part of it. So from there, it was just kind of, you know, letting things flow and, and how we see things. And obviously, at this point, now we're in the room. We've been in the room together. So it's, it's, it's really just building that rapport. Your, your height uh, for a quarterback is uh, conventional. Yeah. His, his is not. Uh, was there a, some sort of translation process that needed to take place there? You know, not a ton. I mean, playing, playing quarterbacks, playing quarterback. I think it, if, uh, if I ever want to get him going, I let him know about that every, every once in a while to keep that chip on his shoulder a little <laughs> bit bigger. But, um, but no, I mean, it's, uh, at the end of the day, you got to play the game. There's obviously ways that, you know, he works around, you know, seeing through windows and over the offensive line. And, I think there are things that you know he's he's figured out how to do that obviously on a pretty high level as, as long as he's been playing so he's uh, he's in a good place with that. He still has that chip, doesn't he? Oh no doubt. Yeah, I don't I don't know if that. It, I would say I I love feeding it because at the end of the day that's what makes him great and it really is. I mean if you look at at the end of the day all the all the great ones have something like that. There's some kind of uh, you know trials and tribulations or something that they're you know has has irked them for a long time. Brady's on his 43rd birthday and he still has his draft card. I mean stuff like that is going to stick with you. I think that's one of the things that. Is going to drive Baker for for years to come. How do you feed it? Yeah. Uh, I mean, we keep we keep it pretty light in there. So, like I said, we'll we'll joke around about it a little bit. And anytime we show c pictures of uh, or clips of, like Carson Palmer, I just go, yeah, that's how you do it. If you're you know, clear cut, blue chip, six foot five, two hundred thirty pound guy, I hope you can do it the same way. But no, he's uh, he's he's a joy to be around. He's a good guy in there, and having Drew in there is is, is great for for a translator too a little bit. The flip side of that, Ryan, is you know, he's a celebrity. He's the face hmm. of the franchise. He's yeah. all these things, and he seems to be. Yeah, no, and I and I think though, if you look at it too, there's there's guys that kind of have have built in. I think it's like everything now. You know, you can you can fit it to however your personality is. And obviously, his personality is he's boisterous. He likes to be out there. He's he's a guy that um, you know keeps keeps the guys engaged. And I think at the end of the day, he he does a good job of being authentic and being himself. And guys are responding to that. When we talked to you in the spring, the theme from you kind of was Baker's got to take ownership of this oh, yeah. uh, offense and. It's going to be his for years, so he's got to be comfortable and give us feedback and every mm -hmm. input. How has that evolved since then? It's been great. I think, uh, you know, even over the summer he was doing that. All the guys came out to Los Angeles, and that's where he was and working out. And, you know, and even Drew was in San Diego, so they bounced back and forth, and we're soaking up the sunshine there. And um, But but he took control. I mean, he, he wanted to, you know, get a hold of stuff, wondering how we're going to teach the guys, if anything's changing. And it was uh, it was good. I mean, he's, he's going to be a coach out there, and I think that's something that, Really, everybody in our room, I'm pleased with. I mean, top to bottom, you look at the way David and Garrett played out there this weekend too. They obviously have that in them. They have that leadership ability, um, and they they get guys right and get them in the right positions to, to make plays. Coach Henry was talking the other day and said Baker comes in the receiver room like yeah. routinely. Yeah. Goes on the whiteboard. Is that like a, a veteran quarterback move? And no, no. I think I mean it's something I think we've tried to foster for us in the quarterback room. Obviously, we get together as an offense first you know, fully and we'll install or we'll put in whatever we're doing, making changes. And then after that, I kind of give those guys and it's a, a joke. It's like a half coaching, half bathroom break. I say, hey, 15, if you need to go talk to the running backs about something, let's go do that. So we'll all go as a group. We'll go as a quarterback, we'll go to the tight end room, go to the offensive line room if it's a protection thing. So, no, I think it's great because at the end of the day, the biggest thing, too, in, in, in my eyes is we can we can sit up in our staff meeting all day and, and find out 80 different ways to do it. It's whatever clicks with Baker, with J.C. Treader, with Nick Chubb, with Odell and Jarvis with, with David and Joku, it's, it's those guys that have to execute it. So if there's something that we teach and we all get on the same page and they have kind of a spin off that that they want to do, then we should collaborate and do that. Improvisation, in terms of improvisation, uh, how strong a skill is that for, uh, for Mayfield? And, uh, is, is, is he uh, rare in that regard or, or do many quarterbacks have uh, those sort of improvisational skills? No, they don't. And uh, I, I still remember when, when Brian Seip was my coach in college, that was one thing that he harped on me on. And, I, you know, looking back as a player, I, I wasn't great at that. And that was something that he always said that he as a player, it felt like took him to the next level. And Baker has so many of those qualities. I mean, it's it's – I've joked before. He's like he's like a Mustang. You know, you don't want to rein him in because a lot of that stuff is what makes plays on Sundays for him. And um, 
he's he's one of the best I've seen in that regard as far as when things break down, which at the end of the day on Sundays when you got you got eleven guys chasing after you, that's what happens. It's never it's never clear cut like we want it to be. Do you get tired of hearing about how Brady and Travis is in that room? <laughs> well the, the running joke is that even David Blau is a Lake Travis guy. Anybody who's ever come out of Texas is a Lake Travis guy. So um <laughs> No, but it's, uh, I mean, obviously it's a storied program. We, we joke about it now. It's, it's fun for them, I think, just because you got, you know, two of the better guys that have played at that school at quarterback, and um, they, get to, they get to be together on, on their professional stage. I mean, that's a, that's a special thing. I got to do that with myself, with the guy who was my center in high school, was on the Arizona Cardinals practice squad for a little bit, and that was a special time for both of us. So I'm sure they're really enjoying that, and obviously, you know, me and Drew try to rib them about Texas football every once in a while, too. How much does it help you to have familiarity with, with Drew and Freddie? Yeah, it's huge. I mean, I think everything we do, and, and right now, you know, we're kind of past the, the, the basic stuff. We're moving on into kind of different, you know, create, cre creative, you know, sides we can get in the offensive system. And having that to bounce back on, you know, we were both in the same room for a couple of years there in Arizona. So we kind of refer back to some things we do and bounce it off Baker. And if he likes it, we roll with it. If he doesn't, then we just keep it moving. From April to now, just take us through what you've seen from Garrett, what you want to see from him going forward. Gosh, you know what? I mean, it's 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 impressive. I mean, at the end of the day, I'd, it's it's almost like you don't want to, you don't want to jump to conclusions. But um, I was really happy with what he did on on Thursday. Um, just the the grasp that he has of the system. You know, Drew's been our guy that obviously was in it for so many years in Arizona. You know, has a feel. Has been in a lot of different systems. Has the experience, obviously, of a of a you know ten plus year vet. So he's been that guy, and you expect him to be that guy, coaching guys on the field, and even talking to Baker about what he sees. But the fact that Garrett's been able to do that, and you know, it's almost misleading because his years of service are technically low, but he's been, he's bounced around the league and been in a ton of systems. So we both spent time in New England. We kind of bounced stuff off that. I try to compare it that our system to theirs, which has some similarities. Um, but he's he's incredible right now. He's almost at a mastery level, and um, it's it's just really impressive. Like I said, I I, I really I'm very fortunate to have an extremely sharp room in there that's that's picking up on things quickly. Do you relate to him you know, I do a little bit. I, I, I do, um, and I'm, I'm sure there's, there's kind of a, a soft spot there for that, um, you know, with, with what he's been through from all the way back at Texas to now and, and being bounced around the league. It, it's, you know, when you're, when you're a third quarterback, that's part of your life. Um, so the biggest thing I harp on with him is just he has the skill set. He's smart enough. He can see things. He understands it. The biggest thing with him at this point now is to have the confidence to go out there and execute it. And he's showed that since he's been here. And it's, it's been impressive, and I hope he continues to grow. This question would uh, be tied to the uh, question about the improvising. And that is, uh, uh, and I would ask you also to evaluate Mayfield's arm strength and how he uses, I, I assume you're going to say it's good. Yeah. But how, does he, how does he use that good arm strength uh, relative to uh, improvising with what he uh, has in his arsenal? Well, it's, it's a part of, and, and even, you know, like David, David Blau is another guy who does a pretty good job actually moving around. They have some similarities. Baker's just got a bit stronger of an arm than he does. So really it comes down to Baker has the opportunity and has the, has the essentially the ability to make so many plays when he's on the move because he has such a strong arm. He's so explosive. He's, you know, he's got such a whip-like motion, gets a quick release, gets it out, that you know when David moves around, he doesn't necessarily have, and he tries to make those throws, and we kind of just say, like, you also got to play within yourself. So when Baker goes out, playing within himself is the whole field, essentially. You know, so it, it, it allows those guys and the receivers and different things, when we break things down, you know, there's nothing that's really off the board. In, in your experience, and you would know as well as anyone, who has the arm, you know, big arm and knows how to use it, whether it's a Rodgers or a who are, who are the, the guys who would be in the running for the title? Yeah, I mean, I mean B Baker's definitely up there. Um, but, you know, Rodgers is a guy who obviously it's, it's, it's like a highlight film over the years with some of the throws that he's made off his back foot and different stuff like that that takes yeah. – a tremendous amount of, of explosion and, and torque. Um, Roma was a guy I remember when I played that you'd want to watch and say, gosh dang, some of these throws that he's making, I don't even want to watch it because I know I'm not going to come close to that. But um, they, I mean, there's a few guys over the years that Stafford's another guy has a really, really strong arm. But, you know, Baker, Baker figures out a way to put himself in positions to use it, that's for sure. Sometimes when we're talking to Baker, like after a few minutes, he gets bored and he wants to challenge <laughs> us or be challenged. Oh sure, no. He's. Uh, I always joke about he's got an extremely quick mind. So there's sometimes he's probably jumping six steps ahead of where I'm coaching, which we get to it. He'll ask a question before I get to it in our progression and our meetings. But that's part of what makes him great too. And at the end of the day, I'll say like like we've kind of worked out. He's uh, he's a good guy too with developing those guys because some of it with David is new and we need to go over it. And Baker will jump in now, and that's the great part of talking about him taking ownership. He's also taking that role of coaching guys, not only in our room but but outside. So it's. It's been a really good progression. Piggybacking off that, um, 
we talked to Baker about this and Freddie about this and Odell about this, yeah. but from your perspective, was it a significant moment when, you know, he's out there and he yells at the receivers <laughs> to work the scramble drill? I mean, yeah. we know he's a leader and everything, but for it to manifest itself like that in that moment, did it jump out to you? No, I mean, I think that's one of those things with him. It's all authentic. So I think it's 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 not something you're going you're gonna to tame or tone down. I think the biggest thing is it's it's new and all Odell's new. I mean, that's probably his first experience with, with Baker doing that. But at the end of the day, the, the best thing about Baker is he does that and he's a man of passion and on the game he's going to do that. But once we get off, he's talking to those guys. I mean, you see him afterwards, he pulls them aside in meetings. We talked about it. You know, it's, it's like anything. Anytime you have your emotion on the field, as long as you can control it, once that plays over and snap back into, you know, an evaluation mode and, and going into what you need to do, that's, that's a great thing. How is Freddie coming along as a head coach? He's doing great. I mean, it's been, uh, it's been really fun. I mean, we, we, me and Drew talk about all the time. The, literally, we sat, you know, National Anthem was singing yesterday, and we thought, you know, five years ago, if we thought we'd all, all three of us would be in this spot, Probably couldn't have guessed it, but it's been uh, obviously extremely fortuitous for all of us. When we have some people nationally come through and watch some of these practices, uh, a lot of them keep saying the same thing, which is that the ball just looks different out of his, out of Baker's hands. Yeah. No, no doubt. I, I think at the end of the day, and that's that's just a lot of stuff we're doing as a team. I mean, I I talked to a few of the CFL guys that have been coming through, and they said the same thing. They said you guys are just so much more explosive in practice than a lot of the people we see. Now, a lot of that too. I think we've had a physical camp, which is good. Um, but we just got a lot of guys playing fast. I think you saw that Thursday where even ones to threes, guys were executing at a high level and were playing fast. And we made mistakes, but at the end of the day, with those guys, especially in the preseason games, you just want them to go out there and, and go fast, essentially. Did you talk about the first drive already? Can you, can you, no, no. Can you just talk about yeah. you know, how that went and, and is that a sign of things to come, especially when OBJ and Jarvis are out there? Yeah, I was going to say, yeah, you throw those guys in the mix and it's going to be dangerous. So say, save, save the first play. He was, he was a little amped up, which he can be. You know, he, he probably was a little quick throwing that one to Derek. And um, he puts that on him. It's pretty much picture perfect how you want him to run a, a no huddle drive. Um, we went out there and we said, hey, let's, let's try and get it done in two minutes on the clock. Now, the thing we didn't, we didn't take into account, obviously, with clock stoppage rules, we got out of bounds that one play. They still roll the clock. So we got it done in two minutes and 13 seconds. If you take that into account, I mean, we're probably just under that in a normal two minute situation. So it was, I mean, you, I hate to say perfection because you can always be a little bit better, but he did great. I mean, that's, that's what I talk about too, taking ownership. He gets out there, he puts guys in spots and he really thrives in those no huddle situations. Why is he so good in those no huddle situations? I think, you know what, you see with a lot of young guys too, I think it's just the way the game's being, being taught at a young age. It's, with everything, it's repetitions, you know, the 10,000 hour, 10,000 rep mastery rule. I mean. These guys have been doing it since they were, you know, go back to Lake Travis. I mean, these guys have been doing that kind of thing for a long time. So it's what they're comfortable with. And I think you just do it in a place where everybody else is on the same page. Obviously, you got a, you got a lot of skilled athletes out there, and it's going uh, to be pretty successful more times than not. So you did say the goal was to try to get it under two minutes? Yeah, we wanted – it was essentially like, hey, if we're going to throw you out there, let's, let's do something that we're going to end up practicing the game and work a two-minute situation or at least try to force one as much as we can. So it was great. Can I ask you know, all along Washington? No, you know what, and we, we let them know pregame. I mean, it was the deal like, yeah, I think it just becomes, in preseason, it's like everything. You want to know how long starters are playing and, and guys, yeah. So, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a, you know, we're not looking to go out there and catch them off guard. Because I think to, to mimic it as a two-minute situation, they would know technically with the t clock on the board as well, whether or not it's a two-minute. So, we didn't, we didn't necessarily want to go, a, you know, let's create on them or anything and catch them off guard. But. So, you Freddie tell Gruden that? You know, I don't know how it went down. I just know we we talked about like, hey, or you know, the referees knew, the other team knew, so everybody was was on board. So you feel about better it. about it because they knew. Sure, no, and that, well, that was the thing too. At, at the end of the day, for us, it's 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 a preseason game. You in the regular season, obviously, we're, let's catch them off guard and let's roll. Let's let's get them on their heels and knock them down. But yeah, I mean, for us, we want to work it. We want to work it against a guy that knows what he's doing and knows what they're expecting. A, a question about two number one overall picks that you know, uh, and how their personalities are different, and how you. you if they are different. Yeah. Carson Palmer, to me, is uh, kind of a, you know, uh, a quieter guy, yeah. uh, you know, uh, straight-laced. Uh, yeah, no. That, and, and Mayfield's, uh, you know, avant-garde or whatever you want to say. Yeah, well, I, I was, being a California guy, I always joke, and, and Jared Goff's kind of the same way. Yeah. You know, California, we're a little bit more laid back there, and, and obviously Texas, everything's bigger, faster, and and harder, so you just, you know, Baker's a guy that, that, you know, he goes hard in everything he does, and obviously Carson's a little bit more laid back, but the thing a lot of people don't know about both of those guys, too, being Carson and Jared, that once you get between the lines, it, it's a switch, and I think it's, Baker kind of just lives his life that way, you know what I mean, and, and, and it, it works out, and I keep saying, 
he's as authentic as they come. You know, there's a guy, Philip Rivers is the same way in, in San Diego or in LA now. You know, he's a guy that is locked in all the time and, and the guys respect it. The guys rise to that level that he, he sets as a standard. Hey, on a personal note, are you, is it your ambition to eventually graduate as a coordinator somewhere or your career you, plan? Yeah, I mean, you know what, I, 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 I treated it this way when I played as a quarterback. If you're not trying to, to make make strides, then then you're going to be stuck in the mud and you're not getting any better. So, to me, if I'm not just trying to get these guys in the best position and make steps with myself as a coach, then I'm hurting the team in that room. So, I'm going to continue to just try and do my best to put those guys in a position, and learn from the guys. Like we got a great great staff. I mean, James Camp and Todd Monk and guys that I can lean on, and you know, obviously Freddie that you know I've been through these situations and I can kind of steal the rep, so to speak, from them as as their experience goes. So getting back to that, uh, you know, Huddle, would you say that it was even No, no doubt. And that's why I say, like, we, we didn't want to, you know, it's being a preseason week one game. It's not necessarily we're throwing our ones out there. We're not trying to catch anybody. You know, we want them to kind of know that it's coming and expect it. And at, at the end of the day, it's, it's kind of one of those things you feel when, when you're rolling like that. As long as we execute and, and we're in the right spots and we got the quarterback making the right decisions, we, sh we shouldn't be stopped. And with the guys that we have, like we, like we said, you know, if Jarvis and Nate and 13 are out there, then, you know, that's just guys that are making more plays with the ball. Does that, does that tempt you to, to, to think maybe we should try tempo in some un unexpected moments this season, maybe more so than you would have thought? You know what? I think that was a – we even got to that last year. Like, I think Baltimore, it happened a little bit. Now, the biggest thing becomes all it is is, is you gotta, you got to take the game as it goes because we went into Baltimore. That was somewhat the plan as well. Um, but obviously, they start running the ball all over the place. You can't throw your defense out there over and over again quickly. So at the end of the day, we still got Nick Chubb and, and a couple other guys in the running back room that can, that can do something with the ball as well. So we want to control the ball and, and, and play good defense and run the ball as well. But there'll be times that obviously we know that we have that in our back pocket.